Hey guys, it's Simon and welcome to this wonderful Sunday video. So I started working on the RPG game this weekend, so on Friday I had a little bit of time and today I also did something. And the progress is quite good I would say, so let me show you what we already have. So first of all we already load maps from tiles, there I will show you something soon. Then we have a player where the camera is following the player when he's moving around. We also spawn already some enemies or also what is another entity that you will be able to interact with will be the chest that you can open it for some loot. Um, then there is also of course collision happening so we cannot move through certain things like for example this rock or this tree. Um, foreground background layer as always is available. You can move through enemies so there um, we have a sorted rendering as well so when we are in front of that guy we are drawn in front of him and when we are in the back we are at the back of this guy. There I think it makes sense to keep it like that because maybe for some enemies you just want to walk through them and you don't want to collide with them and, and drag them around so that's fine and also you cannot leave the, the map area so there's a restriction that you cannot go outside of the area and the camera is also restricted to that specific area. That's working and there is one very very exciting thing for me so as you might know from the past from my other tutorials if you have watched them then usually let me disable here something how is it called that one so usually what I always had to do is I added an additional layer to tiled and then for like I think it was always a an object layer that I called collision and then I started to draw the different things so that I had then the collision areas either with a rectangle or with a with a polygon and then my logic in the game was then simply parsing through all these collision objects and creating the, the collision layer let's say. But that was always annoying because for example for that tree I had to copy and paste the same shape all over again. Um, if I want to have it perfect, I either need to make sure that it's pixel perfect there. Uh, when I create a new map, I need to copy over those objects and then place it there. And I always thought that this is not uh, a nice way to do it. It's, it's working of course, but it's not ideal. And there was an, uh, an introduction at one of the tiled versions which is a collision editor for a specific tile. So for example, this is the tile set that I'm using for the map. And there, uh, when you click on the tile, you can have a collision editor. And then for that specific tile, you can specify what is the collision for that. And then simply reuse that. So for example, here we see those boxes. And when I show again the collision shapes, then automatically for any box that I place in this map I will automatically have the collision object because it's specified in the tile set and not in the map itself. Also what I found there which is quite interesting and useful so when you add a new collision area for an object there's a button which is called detect bounding box and then it simply to me at least it looks like it uh, takes the, the biggest area for the pixels which are not transparent. So like here at the bottom there are transparent pixels, they are not part of the bounding box, but the ones which have uh, a non-transparent pixel, this is part of the bounding box. So adding these co uh, additional collision stuff for a specific tile is then actually very easy. And um, what I then thought, okay great, so we can read those collision objects out of the tiles, but imagine we have a huge map. So this is a pretty small one, but imagine you have this maybe four or, or ten times this size of the map. Then um, with my old logic, I simply create all these collision objects at once. And that would be pretty bad because since now it's per tile, so before with the layer approach, that area here would 
just be one object for the collision. But now with this tile approach, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's eight uh, collision objects. And that could add up quite heavily on a huge map that you have then thousands of collision objects uh, when in fact you only need maybe three or four of them. So that's why I made a new approach and there let me turn on the debug system once more so that you see what is happening behind the scenes and which will also be covered in the in the tutorial. So behind the scenes the logic now checks, so I'm here the player, is there a tile close to me, so which is relevant in a specific area around the player, and then it automatically spawns those collision objects. So you can see that here below, so there is a rectangle, there is one around the stone and about this tree, uh, around this tree, but there is no collision object up here for this box, for example, at the moment. And the reason is, it's impossible that this is currently relevant for us for the collision, so I don't need to create this object here. So the logic simply checks uh, in a small area, I think it's three times three or something like that, it's configurable. It checks, does a tile have a collision uh, object specified? And if yes, spawn it once. And then also, this is the, the approach that I currently use, not sure if I keep that. Uh, also, every object gets a sensor, so this is the circle areas that you see here. And when the player leaves that circle, then the collision object which is related to that gets destroyed. So you see it here, so for this tree, we do no longer have now the collision objects because we are outside of the important area, let's say, so they get cleaned up. Same here, if I go a little bit up again, then you see they are disappearing and also the new collision objects, so now for this stone and this tree, they are loaded and destroyed on demand, as you can see that here. So there's a, a lot of circles, so the circles are always the sensors uh, for these collision objects which detect when we are outside and when we should despawn the entities and the, the, the rectangles here, those are the real collision objects where we cannot walk through that. So that approach I actually like a lot because with that we keep the amount of objects for the collision to a minimum. So even if we would have a huge map uh, with let's say 5000 by 5000 pixels, it won't matter because the objects are created dynamically and they also get removed quite fast. Um, so that should not be a problem anymore performance wise and also object creation wise with Box2D. So that's a pretty neat approach and what I like about that is again that I only need to specify now the collision per tile and it automatically uses it everywhere. Um, I don't need to draw all those collision objects manually all the time. So this is a new approach that I wanted to choose there and yeah that, that's working. So what is missing currently is now the, the proper state handling. So for the player as you see, I can move, but uh, he doesn't play a move animation, for example. He also cannot attack at the moment. Also, the enemies here are quite stupid. They are also just drawn in a specific way that, yeah, that they play their idle animation, but they don't walk around. They also don't attack the player and, and things like that. So all of that needs to be uh, improved a little bit. And that needs to be added in hopefully the next week. Uh, that I can finish that, then I want to do of course some refactoring, go over the code again and clean it up and then I will start recording the videos for the tutorial series. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching and have a nice Sunday. Bye bye.